It's all Stan, that's for God's help and service tonight. Richard, will you pray for us? Dear Heavenly Father, I want to ask that you would be an error with our three parts of this. Thank you all for the singing is here. Looks like the rain has kept a few people away from our service tonight. But we're glad that you came. The rain didn't keep you away. Now I may have mentioned this fellow before that I'm going to mentioned here tonight. Uh, his name is Charles H. Gabriel. He was born in Wilton, Ohio, Iowa, Wilton, Iowa, in 1856. Uh, he was raised on a farm. He learned to play the family organ, actually taught himself there. He died in 1932 in California at the age of 76. Uh, he was a writer of gospel songs and composer of gospel tunes. He is said to have written and or composed between 7,000 and 8,000 songs, many of which are available in the 21st century hymnals. He used several pseudonyms. You know, if you don't know what that means, that means different names as he wrote these songs. One of them, if you look in the songbook, you might find Charlotte G. Homer. He wrote under that name. H. A. Henry. Uh, S. B. Jackson. There were a few of the pseudonyms he used. Uh, there's a lot to say about him, but I'm just going to bring a few things out. He edited 35 gospel songbooks, eight Sunday school songbooks, seven books for male courses, six books for ladies, 10 children's songbooks, 19 collection of anthems, 23 choir cantatas, 41 Christmas cantatas, 10 children's cantatas, and books on musical instruction. Sounds like he was a pretty busy man to me. He loved music. I think his father uh, led, him, led him song services, and so he developed a love for music as a, as a young fellow there. If you take your sing to, uh, to the Lord, we're going to be singing one of his songs, and uh, it's at page 224. Page 224. My Savior's love.
Any special requests you'd like to mention tonight? That was special unspoken. Special unspoken. I'm sure we have unspoken requests on our hearts, hearts tonight. Okay, let's all kneel. That's Dale. Would you lead us to go? We'll pray out. <laughs> person accepts that challenge, they are sent to boot camp for the necessary training to enable them and equip them for the place of service that they have chosen. There they are trained, disciplined, and prepared to serve in the United States military. As a Christian, we're engaged in a battle. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians, and I quote, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the roars of darkness in this world, against the spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand in the evil day. If we're going to see real revival in 2021, we're going to have to prepare for it. First, we must prepare ourselves, and we are to be God's soldiers for the battle that we're in. So if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 2. Shall we stand, please, in honor of God's Word? 2 Timothy 2, beginning with verse 1. Thou, therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier." And my text this evening is 1 Corinthians 15, 58, which reads, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you so much for your wonderful word that we can read it and study it and apply it to our daily living. And Lord, truly, we are in a battle these days. The devil's doing everything he can to discourage the saints and increase strongholds on people. And, oh, God, we need your help today. Help us to continue to put on the whole armor of God and be what you want us to be in these last days. We need to be faithful to the end. Challenge each of our hearts tonight through this message to go forward in our walk with you in these challenging days. And we'll praise thee in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. you. may be seated. Prayer is where the battle is fought. In our personal lives, 
in the church and in the world. Believing prayer is the vehicle through which the power of God is conveyed. Prayer is the foundation for success and growth in individuals, churches, and beyond. It's the means by which Satan is conquered and the victory of Jesus on Calvary is made manifest. The disciples understood this when they asked Jesus when he was here on earth, Lord, teach us to pray. It's very obvious the disciples watched Jesus' life and they could tell that he had power in his ministry because he had a prayer life. That they, they wanted to teach us to pray like you. Prayer is personal communion with God. God has called every Christian to prayer. In fact, without prayer, we will be absolutely powerless. We come to know God in the place of prayer. Is it any wonder the church world is powerless and we are powerless if we don't pray? Ephesians 6.18 declares, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 states, Pray without ceasing. And in James 5.16 we read, The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Why do you think the devil fights our prayer life? Because he knows that's where the power is. God rules the world by the prayers of his saints. Prayer is the power by which Satan is conquered. By prayer, the church on earth has disposed of the powers of the heavenly world. Andrew Murray declared, and I quote, I believe that my prayers move God's hand and enable the divine power of God to be set into motion in the lives of those for whom I am praying. I know and believe that God hears and answers prayer based on the promises in his word. Prayer changes things, and prayer changes people, and prayer changes me. Unquote. How much time each day do you spend in prayer? How much time did you spend in prayer yesterday? We need to ask ourselves from time to time, can those for whom I pray for depend on my prayers? What is it that keeps me from the place of prayer? To be a good Christian soldier, we must do our spiritual exercises daily. Bending our knees in the place of prayer shows God our spirit of humility and dependence on Him. Hebrews 10, 19-23 reads, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Since the way to the holy place and the mercy seat has been opened, we have been invited to bring our praises and petitions to the God of the universe. How awesome, folks, is that? Someone said, and I quote, we need to pray because we know that the adversary is always plotting our downfall, always contriving to defeat us and bring us into misery and failure. If he can stop us from praying, he has won the day. So be aware and continue to pray. If you can't kneel in prayer, walk and pray. It keeps you awake. He who prays in faith enlists Almighty God. All the armies of heaven and every law of the universe are in the interest of his cause. Our prayers are God's opportunities to exhibit his mighty power when he answers. Ephesians 3.20 states, Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Mark 11.24 declares, Whatsoever things ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Unbelief is the biggest hindrance to prayer. We must have faith in God, not faith in our frail prayers. Our faith must be in the promiser. How big is your God that you're serving tonight? Is he big enough for your needs and mine? The songwriter penned the words so well. Doubt sees the obstacles. Faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darkest night. Faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take a step. Faith soars on high. Doubt questions who believes. Faith answers 
I. Patience and perseverance are important on the battleground of prayer. Charles Spurgeon once said, and I quote, Waiting exercises our grace. Waiting tries our faith. Therefore, wait on in hope. For through the answer tarries, for though the answer tarries, it can never come too late. Remember, this is God's battle, not yours. The victories must be won in the heavenlies before they are won here on earth. Every prayer that is sent to heaven meets with resistance from Satan. There are no victories won in the kingdom of God without a Christian battling on his or her knees. Spiritual battles are fought on our knees with the aid of the word of God and the Holy Spirit as we claim the promises of God. God is not only a God of love, but he's also called a man of war. Exodus 15, 3. One of the names of God in Isaiah 9 is God-like warrior. To Joshua, he revealed himself as captain of the host of the Lord. Joshua 5, 14. See, Satan is God's enemy first and our enemy next. He attempts to get at God through his children. So in prayer, we are fighting the Lord's battles as laborers together with him. He has already won the battle on Calvary, but as we labor in prayer, we enforce those victories in our own behalf and for those for whom we're praying for. There is no vacation from prayer. Don't ever allow Satan to get you so busy that you don't take time to pray. Aren't you glad someone was faithful to pray for you? I know, if it wasn't for my mother's prayers, I wouldn't be here tonight. In the place of prayer, we will not retreat nor surrender to the enemy. Fight on, Christian soldiers. Our goal should be that I will not allow Satan to rob me of my time in the place of prayer. I will not give in nor will I give up on the brink of a miracle. As a Christian soldier, we must never forget that one of Satan's word tools he uses against Christians is the weapon of discouragement. To overcome discouragement, we must be full of praise and thanksgiving. Prayer and praise are inextricably linked together. Both are weapons against our enemy. The songwriter said that Satan trembles when he sees the weakest saint upon his knees. Our prayers must be linked with praise. When heaven seems far away, praise God for who he is and what he has already done for you. Praise him for the last answer to prayer and for the answers that are yet on the way. H. Waterville stated it so precisely when he said, and I quote, Praise is the highest form of the prayer of faith. Prayer changes things. Praise preserves what prayer has changed. Let me read that again. I think that's profound. Prayer changes things. Praise preserves what prayer has changed. Unquote. Second Chronicles 20, 20 states, and when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon, and they were smitten. Acts 16.25 declares that at midnight Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosened. Did you ever think of all the millions of people on the face of this earth that don't even know God? Just think about it. There's millions here in the United States who don't know God like we do. They don't, know, they don't know them at all. You and I, folks, have been blessed and privileged to know the way of salvation and to experience the joy and peace that only comes through knowing Jesus Christ. When we are tempted, or when you're tempted to be discouraged, remember, you are truly blessed. For in the light of eternity, you know the way to heaven. Many have never heard or known. We need to praise him often for the privilege of prayer of being a child of God. We have a lot to be thankful. Everybody in this sanctuary tonight, we have a lot to be thankful for. Amen. <clears throat> As a Christian, if you want God to give you some blessings, give what you need. If you need encouragement, 
Go give it to somebody else that needs encouragement and it'll come back to you. If you need money, give what you can to the Lord's cause and God will bless you financially. Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. From the amount that some people give to the Lord, they must be positive that it's the little things that count. Giving is the thermometer of our love. A preacher out in the country was testing out one of his rich members. <clears throat> John was a farmer, and the preacher asked him, John, if you had 100 pigs, would you give 25 to God? Oh, yes, Pastor, I would. Well, John, if you had 20 pigs, would you give up five to God? Absolutely, Pastor. John, if you had two pigs, would you give one to God? Preacher, cut that out. You know that I only have two pigs. <laughs> as long as we're being hypothetical about giving, we'll be generous. But once God asks us what we're going to do with what we have in our hands, we have a problem. The Christian's least used, but an effective weapon against Satan is the area of fasting. Mark 9, 29 declares, And Jesus said unto them, This kind of power can come forth by nothing but prayer and fasting. Sadly, fasting has long been neglected by the church world. Is it any wonder that the church is powerless with little prayer and little or no fasting? One would ask, is fasting really important? Absolutely it is. You see, fasting we used all through the Old Testament and New Testament. Kings and prophets would call fast when faced with situations that seemed to be impossible. When Queen Esther was looking at the imminent death of herself and her people, she called a fast. Jesus himself fasted 40 days before beginning his earthly ministry. If fasting was necessary back in those times, how much more is fasting needed in 2021? Fasting, coupled with prayer, is the Christian soldier's powerful weapon. Those who fast are those who are desperate to grow closer to God and seek Him work, to see Him work in power and in glory. How desperate are we to see our lost loved ones saved, to see revival in ourselves and in our churches and our community. How desperate are we tonight to see this really happen? Resistance training is resisting pleasure and praying instead. We live in a pleasure-mad society. But to be an effective Christian soldier, we're going to have to deny ourselves some legitimate things to see God move like he really wants to in these last days. You know, when it comes to fasting, be sure you have a purpose for your fast while you're fasting. Why are you fasting if you're going to fast? Just fasting or skipping a meal but not praying will not work. will do nothing for you. The purpose for fasting is to shut away the world and its pleasures and spend time with God. You see, you can fast normal foods, such as meats or desserts, but you can also fast some of your favorite hobbies to spend more time with God. You can fast various types of media so you can have more time to read God's Word and to pray. You know, when it comes to a fast, stay focused and ask God for His help. He wants to do a work in you as well as that one for whom you are praying for. You see, the closer you get to God, the more you love what God loves. Always remember, folks, that God loves people. And we're to love people as well. People are illogical, unreasonable, and self-centered. We'll love them anyway. If you do good, people will accuse you of selfish ulterior motives. Do it anyway. The good you do today will perhaps be forgotten tomorrow. Do good anyway. Honesty and frankness makes you vulnerable. Be honest and frank anyway. People really need help, but may attack you if you help them. Help them anyway. Remember, God's love is unconditional. Never forget that. Let us never forget as Christian soldiers that our mission is to go into all the world 
and preach the gospel to every creature. And that doesn't mean preaching out of the Bible. It means living the life in front of them and telling them about Jesus. That means that all of our life radiates Christ's likeness. That every Christian is to be a true Christian soldier, living out the life of Christ through our words, our thoughts, our actions, our reactions, our attitudes, and our spirit. Oh, that God would make us more like him in all these areas where we can be a shining light for him in these dark, dark days. George Duffield penned the word so well in Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Ye soldiers of the cross, lift high his royal banner. It must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army shall he lead, till every foe is vanquished, and Christ is Lord indeed. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. Stand in his strength alone. The arm of flesh will fail you. You dare not trust your own. Put on the gospel armor, and watching unto prayer, where duty calls or danger, be never wanting there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. The strife will not be long. This day the noise of battle, the next the victor song. To him who overcometh, a crown of life shall be. He with the king of glory shall reign eternally. I want to close tonight by singing page 644 and sing to the Lord hymnal. Onward, Christian soldiers. Let's continue to press the battle and go forward in these challenging days. Let's all stand as we sing page 644. Onward, Christian soldiers.
precious Heavenly Father, again, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have of gathering in your house. We yes. thank you, Lord, that you're on the throne. You rule this universe. Yes, Lord Jesus, we ask thank that you Jesus. keep your hand upon each one that's here tonight. May each one of us, Lord, draw closer to you. Be all that you want us to be, Jesus. Watch over us this week. Make us a blessing to someone, Lord. And for all that what you do, we'll give you the praise because you're worthy. It's in yes. Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you.